So you didn't expect that one more thing here. <laughs> so R3 is, we're so excited about what this sort of delivers beyond what we see in R2. It's, it takes the package of R2 and the platform, it shrinks it, it puts it into our take on what is a crossover. Um, and it's a vehicle that's almost hard to define what it is, but it so beautifully captures our brand, it captures what we represent as a company. Uh, it's dynamically incredible, the shorter wheelbase, the tighter dimensions, uh, really enable it to be something that's you know, maneuverable and drivable. But as tidy as it is on dimensions on the outside, we've put so much effort into making sure that the inside feels big. And uh, much like we saw on, on R2, uh, there's a lot of work that went into everything that you see in the rear of the vehicle, the, the occupant areas in the front of the vehicle. But this is all enabled by the platform. And it's about five inches shorter, 135 millimeters shorter than what you see in R2 in terms of wheelbase but leveraging all that same content. So the single motor, the dual motor, and a tri-motor, the beautiful battery pack built around a, a larger format cell, our network architecture, uh, really excited about that. Oh, hello. Um, so up front, we have a front storage trunk, much like what we had in R2. And that storage area of the vehicle, uh, you can use to throw all your gear, your bags, and something like this, wonderful for, for that everyday urban usability, uh, adventure usability. But I want to spend some time in the back. And we spent so much time as a team thinking about working on how do we create a unique closure experience in the back. And what you just saw happen is the rear lift gate came up. Um, just like we saw in R2, the first and the second row seats fold flat. Uh, so it creates a, an opportunity for in-car camping or it creates an opportunity to carry your long gear. Uh, but when we close this, there's a second way to get to the back, which we call our flipper glass. And what I love about this is it makes it easy to get things in and out, but this actuation can actually go to multiple heights. So if you're carrying something that's longer, that could be a surfboard, it could be stuffed animals, it could be a trombone. Um, you can adjust the height here and it's a, it's a user setting to make it really easy to carry those bigger objects or bigger things around. And you know, as I said, everything in, as we thought about this vehicle was around making a, a smaller car, car feel really big. Now, looking at the interior, a lot of what we saw on the, um, you know, on the R2 carries over here. So the use of materials, the way we think about the sustainability of those materials, how durable they are, uh, and, and really embodying that Rivian feel is, is driven into this. And I wish we could all sit in the car right now. But it, um, same thing we, we had with our two with the control wheels and the steering wheel. Lots of flexibility in terms of storage. Two glove boxes. Um, <laughs> and of course, we still have a flashlight here. Now, we talked about platform flexibility. Hopefully you're seeing that here between R2 and R3. Uh, the ability for these, these two vehicles with really common family genes. You can feel their siblings. They look like the Rivians. They feel like the Rivians. Unfortunately, you can't all drive them to say they drive like the Rivians, but I can guarantee they do. Um, but there's one more thing. <laughs> one more thing. And looking at R, R3, we wanted to take everything that's embodied and put it into an even higher performance package. And this is something we call R3X. 